Hey guys, Jay here. Welcome to Models Memories Weekly, episode 137. Models Memories is a show about nothing and it is filmed in front of a live studio audience. This is a show where I talk about my painting, modeling, and wargaming experiences from the week. Now you might be thinking to yourself, Jay, you put out three YouTube videos a week. How? Could I possibly have more to say? Well, I do. And here goes. This week, Games Workshop blindsided us by completely revamping their web store and we got a brand new Necron model. But first, do you love vampires? I know you do, and today's sponsor is perfect for that. Akalare is launching a brand new Kickstarter campaign called The Crimson Court, featuring one of horror literature and cinema's most iconic characters, Dracula. On offer is a unique variety of physical models, high quality resin sculpts that pay tribute to that lovable vampire that has captivated people for centuries. The collection will feature seven unique models that depict Draki in many of his various facets. From the historical figure of Vlad Tepes, whom Dracula is based on, a bust of Nosferatu, medieval fantasy, Drac on a horse, to my personal favorite, the terrifying, horrifying Chibi Drac. Look upon his face. The face of death. All totaled up, it is quite a collection that has a little something for everyone. This campaign is live now, so hurry up to get your models while it's around. Whether you're a fan of horror, goth, or just inspired to get some schnazzy miniatures to add to your collection, these models are for you. Follow the link in the description below to get your vamp on. This week, I was absolutely shocked to open the Games Workshop web store, as I often do to do a little research or a little window shopping of miniatures that I certainly don't need to buy, and every single thing was different. Now, the old Games Workshop web store did have some problems, but I, I do kind of like older websites because they're what a website should be. It's a list. It's an easily searchable list. Games Workshop made it a little harder to search with their checkbox functionality, which was super frustrating because if I wanted to look at Space Marines and then I was done looking at Space Marines, I wanted to look at Orcs. I kind of had two options, either refresh the whole page so it reset or click on Orcs and then wait for the page to load in Orcs on top of my Space Marines. And then once it was done loading, uncheck Space Marines so that it would remove the Space Marine options and it would only show me Orcs. It was pretty annoying, but and it probably also is just because I was so familiar with the old Games Workshop web store that it seemed decently easy to search. But the new one, it's probably a lateral move. The old one had some problems. I feel like the new one has some problems, or maybe it's just my old fashioned tendencies for websites. The new website seems like a mess of things to click on. So much advertising, and it's hard to tell which things are being advertised to you, which ones are models, which ones are new things, which ones are just random articles from Warhammer community. It's it's a little bit of a mess. I do kind of like the Warhammer branding, like it seems like Games Workshop is kind of gone and it's being completely replaced by Warhammer. I remember when the stores changed from Games Workshop stores to Warhammer stores which is probably a smart move because Games Workshop probably sounds like they sell games, but they don't sell games. They only sell Warhammer. So it does seem like a very reasonable switch. I do like in the new website, once you actually get to where you want to get to, like Space Marines, Black Templar, boom. I do like now how it shows you everything. It seems like they didn't have the spinnies worked out when I first checked, but I assume those are coming because you need the 360 spinny. Without the 360 spinny, it's just a normal website. It's like the nicest thing that Games Workshop does is it lets you really see the model. And often what I do is, because I don't read the instructions like I should, often what I'll do is I'll be putting together my model, have no idea where this part goes. So instead of just cracking open the instructions, I'll pull up the Games Workshop web store and give the 360 spinny a look to see, okay, yeah, it goes right there on his butt. That's where the grenade goes. I could just look at the instructions, but I really like the spinny and it kind of helps me get in the mood of this model and learn about it a little bit more and get see what somebody else did painting wise. So leave a comment below. Let me know what you think of the new Games Workshop web store. I think it's fine. It's fine. It's definitely not a slam dunk. This is much better than it used to be, but it's also not terrible, horrible. This website is unusable. One thing that is a little bit unusable is I there doesn't seem to be a view all function, which is garbage because I always want to view all. My computer can handle it. At least one of, not my Mac, but my real computer can handle it without crashing or freezing. And now I have to just constantly like, load more, load more, load more. It's like, I just want to see a land raider. 
But unfortunately, it's item number 200 for Space Marines. I guess I could search Land Raider, but sometimes you, like, like, I just want I just want to get to it. I just want to get to it quickly and I want to see all the pretty pictures. It is it's a little frustrating. Oh, and when Games Workshop launched their new website, they made the sizzle reel to end all sizzle reels. It's kind of awesome and super hilarious. If anybody is a fan of Lego out there, you'll know that they're also very good at product at fake product photography where you'll see like what their idea of who's going to buy this Lego set playing in a very kind of modern industrial looking comfortable place and they're putting together the Legos in beautiful perfect lighting that sometimes you can see in the reflection of the Legos and it's just hilarious how fake it is but it's like it looks good and Games Workshop did this too they hired some actors and a set and they made it look like people were having the time of their life playing Warhammer 40,000 as if it was game night playing Yahtzee. It's awesome. It's super funny. Obviously, that's that's marketing. That's they're doing a very good job. But what I think is they should have hired like Nick and I and some of our friends because that would be a real depiction of Warhammer 40K. <laughs> Us playing Kill Team on our dining room table in bad lighting <laughs> with pretzels and beer around. That, I, think, I feel like that would have really, that would have really been a sales pitch for Warhammer 40k. And it was great to see these lovely fake moments interspersed between like tournaments and cosplay events and like real things. Because as I'm watching the sizzle reel, I'm like, that's, you know, ha, that's fake. Aw, oh, look at those people having fun. Yep, that's fake too. It was, ah, oh, it was absolutely a sight to behold. Cook up some popcorn and watch the sizzle reel. It's, it actually, it also is kind of a reminder of probably why Games Workshop is so popular because they do a good job of making their game seem like a real thing and not the most ridiculous product in the history of products. It doesn't have, like, some hobbies do seem to have a little bit of, like, substance behind them, even if they don't, like, fishing, sports, like, those sorts of things, you, you, you know, working on your car that you're never actually going to get working and it's just taking up space in your garage, like, all of those hobbies feel like they have some weight behind them, like, people would actually respect you a little bit for mentioning those sorts of hobbies, not Warhammer, but Warhammer is a heck of a lot of fun, the cool models, the cool games, video games, books, animations that you can't watch unless you subscribe to Warhammer TV for some reason. Like all of this stuff is really, really cool and fun. So I think, and I think Games Workshop, it pushes so incredibly hard because it is cool and fun. They just have to figure out ways to convince people to actually give it a try. I think the best way would be maybe to lower the, lower the price or just have some slightly better entry points into the hobby, but I get it. They want to make all of the money in the universe. So we still got, uh, what is what is it now? $150 combat patrols, $140 is too much, is too much. But speaking of far too much, that's not even the most exciting thing that happened this week. I, a Necron player, they were my first army, my first purchase ever of Warhammer miniatures. It was a little box of death marks that I got in high school. The new Necron Overlord. And I saw this guy on Facebook first, and I thought it was a Photoshop kit bash. I was 100% sure that's what it was, and so I kept scrolling. And then later, I just kept seeing it over and over. My Facebook groups, uh, my Necron Facebook groups on Facebook are very, very split on this model. And I kind of see why he's in a very specific pose. It's an overlord phasing into reality. And depending on how you look at it, his little techno digital doodads look a little unconvincing it's hard to show off energy and i feel like it's always going to be subjective if you like that energy or not i know a lot of people really really love the um Catan shard of the void dragon that guy has like these little wispy energy tendrils and sometimes when i look at that model it looks like crackling electric energy and sometimes when i look at that model it looks like bailing wire that's just twisted up a little bit it's really hard to show off like ethereal magic and I think this model does a decent job of it I am glad that he's not just another 
Necron Overlord or Necron Lord because we have a lot of those at this point. We even have a lot of those in plastic at this point. So we probably didn't need just another normal pose Overlord. And he does seem to actually have some really cool abilities like probably Deep Strike, I would assume, because in the article it mentions him just being able to appear where he's needed. And obviously Resurrection Orb is pretty necessary for a Necron Overlord. Automatic six inch on the advanced roll, which is phenomenal, especially for Necrons where all of their guns, pretty much all of their guns are assault. So he does make for a pretty schnazzy little character that does things that other Necrons can, which specifically is move at all. Necrons are so incredibly slow. They have some good options like the night sides and eh, sort of the, the barges. But having an overlord that can just really change up the usability of a certain unit like Immortals and Necron Warriors is really, really handy to have in the army. And it still makes me wonder, because we already know what how many unit entries are going to be in the upcoming Necron Codex. And it's still, there's still two missing. And I'm really nervous that they're going to be my favorites. Vargard Oberon and Nemesir Zandrik. They are my absolute favorite Necrons. I absolutely love them. They're a very, very cute couple. I have them both and I've, I, I started cleaning off all of the little fine cast triangles, just scraping away at them. And I kind of gave up a little bit, but I want to get back to them. And they're super cool, but I could see them leaving the range because they're old Necron fine cast hero units that never really found their place or made their way into the lore. Necrons unfortunately got a whole bunch. Uh, they like they kind of came into their own during the fine cast age when like Games Workshop was just pumping out characters in this brand new amazing material called fine cast and they all stink. It's weird that Forge World exists and they never once ever told Games Workshop how to make resin models. Forge World models aren't incredibly good but they're at least better than Games Workshop fine cast. There's a reason it was called fail cast. They kind of at least have got the casting process all worked out, but they're still awful because they've ruined the master models with all of these little triangles everywhere. And speaking of Forge World, Forge World is now rolled into the official Games Workshop web store, which I didn't realize would be really annoying because when you look up Space Marines, you also get all of 30k and so all of a sudden you know if i'm looking at you know if i want to look at like a space marine impulsor i have to scroll through pages of shoulder pads so that i can actually get to the impulsor so i kind of wish that that stuff was scooched all the way into 30k proper technically there are options available for 40k like most of the first founding chapters for space marines can very easily utilize those 30k upgrade bits and things so it does make sense, but it is a little bit annoying to have a Forge World and Games Workshop all wrapped up into one. I was very shocked to see that nothing didn't make the transfer over. Forge World things that have been out of stock for literal years are still there showing out of stock, but they made it over. And things that I'm really desperately hoping don't leave the Games Workshop web store, like regular Space Marine jump packs. It's just like a little five pack of jump packs. I really want that to come back in stock, but I'm not at all hopeful because Games Workshop has no reason to sell it because jump packs are no longer a purchasable upgrade for anything in the game. Like you can't just slap a jump pack on a captain or onto some um, Blood Angel Death Company. You just, there's no need to have separate backpacks. So it says out temporarily out of stock right now. And I'm really hoping that just by accident, the manufacturer makes a whole bunch of more jump packs so that I can buy them because they're, they're probably going to disappear from the web store, but they haven't disappeared yet. It seems like every single thing actually did make it on to the new website. But getting back to this Necron Overlord I forgot to talk about. This guy is pretty good. He looks a lot like the, what is it, the Dark Elder Archon guy who's also kind of doing a... Uh, like an Egyptian mummy kind of a pose, which makes a little bit more sense for the Necrons than it does for the Dark Elder. I'm sorry, the Drudkari. But it is a pretty sick pose. His leg doesn't exist yet. Like it's not, it hasn't formed into reality, which is a cool look. It's a cool idea, but it does make him feel a little weenie because he's missing chunks of himself physically 
because they haven't digitally loaded in yet. Kind of like when Will, when that one kid got Willy wonka and he got sent up as digital data through the air and then came back small. It's a weird tangent, but it's kind of what this model is reminding me of a little bit. I don't know. It's it's lacking a little bit. I do like how Dawn of War dealt with Necrons phasing into reality by just having them George A. Romero zombie claw out of the dirt. But that would have also been incredibly hard to pull off in a miniature. Like, would it have been a 50 millimeter base with just one Necron hand sticking out of it? It would have been incredibly funny. And that would have actually that would actually make for a really fun event exclusive miniature, as opposed to just kind of a slight reimagining something that already exists. Just a, a 40k base with one Necron hand sticking out of it. That would be a really, really fun model. But overall, I'm pretty happy with this guy. I think he's neat. And it's also hilarious that in the article, they show off that this miniature was actually shown off in their little silhouette guess what miniature is coming up two years ago. So well before 10th edition came out, well before anything, it is super obnoxious. Like I don't really look at the rumor engine anyway because you can't tell. You just can't tell what's happening. So what's even the point of speculating? But wow, what's the point of speculating if it's gonna take two years for whatever they're showing off to actually be revealed. It's a little obnoxious and I wonder if it was just like by accident, it got shown off incredibly early or maybe this model was meant to come out a long time ago, but then they thought, wait a second, Necron Codex is coming out for 10th edition. We need something to throw in there to be new, to make it feel new and special and for people to actually have a reason to purchase it so that they can put the code into their app so that they can get the app functionality that they already had when we were using the index rules. Oh, Warhammer app. Warhammer app. What have you done to us? Unlike a Games Workshop's app, you know it always has full functionality. That's right, our Patreon. Over there, we have a new STL set every single month, and this month we have the Shipping Hub a full battlefield's worth of lovely terrain featuring a humongous crane, elevators, and fully functional shipping containers. We also make extra episodes of Eons of Battle where we take a look at our viewers' miniatures and give some ideas and critiques of how to improve their painting. And we have a tier where you can get your name on one of my Black Templar Space Marines and you can join the Crusade. It's been a very wild week for Warhammer. I'm definitely gonna be avoiding the Games Workshop web store. It's gonna it'd be a little bit sad that I can never go back to the old, bright, white, sterile website. I have to look at the new, cool, dark mode 2023 website. So just something to have to live with. Thanks for watching.